to, we need to believe that we can believe like this guy in the Bible. Amen? We need to believe that we can believe. We need to be able to think big. We need to be able to talk big. And we need to be able to walk big. Come on, let's say it together. We need to think big. We need to talk big. And we need to walk big. You know, in, in all the work that I've done in ministry, in all the things that I've seen, nothing happens unless I pursue it. When God shows me the green light to go after it and go and move, I can't just sit here in the office. i got to be out there trying to get it going, trying to make things happen. I, Los Angeles was never going to invite me. Amen? But when I said I want to go to Los Angeles, I looked up an old friend. And we went to Los Angeles, and we did a service out there. And we had people show up. Praise God. I took an ad in the L.A. Times. I invested my own funds because if you don't believe in yourself, how can God or anyone else believe in what you're doing? And I put it out there, and we went to Los Angeles, and guess what? We've been back four times. Well, three times, four times. This will be our fourth time coming up in December. Already going back, and, and we're filling up that event already. But you have to go after it. You have to make things happen. You got to think of big dreams for your family. You got to think of big things that happen for this area. You got to think of big things that happen wherever God wants you to do. But you got to start thinking it. Now turn with me if you can. In your in the Word of God, we go to First Samuel thirty-seven one. One of my favorite favorite stories of the Bible, and it's just not because his name is David, but <laughs> it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Praise God. And you go to, I think, I believe it's 37. Or oh, 17. I'm sorry, 17. Yes, 17. I'm just going to read you the story. We all know about David in the Bible. Amen? About when he fought Goliath. I must remember that story, David and Goliath. Well, there's a lot of things that happen in that story that we got to understand for us about faith, about thinking big, talking big. And walking big. Now, if we read, if we look at the story, I'm not going to read the whole story. I'm just going to go through certain parts of it. David comes up to see his brothers. And when he comes up to see his brothers, he sees them all with the other soldiers. And as he's with the other soldiers and stuff, he goes over there and he brings them the cheese and he brings them the bread. He brings them the milk. He brings all that to them. But then he keeps hearing this guy speaking crazy on the other side. And he sees when this guy comes out, everybody trembles and everybody runs and hides in their tent. And everybody's fearful of this one big giant. And David's sitting there saying, is this true? No one's going to face this guy? Is this true that no one's going to do anything? Is this true that not one man in this entire army it will do anything to go and fight this guy? And, and David looked at and he kept questions. And if you read the story from verses um, 26 to all the way down to, to 30, you will see him talking back and forth with different people in the Bible, different people that were there, and asking him the same thing. What would the king do for a man that would go kill him? What would the king do for a man that stands up to this giant? What would the king do? And they said, surely he'd give him their daughter. Surely he'd, his house would be free. Surely he'd give him wealth and riches. And he's hearing all this stuff. Now that was David beginning to think. That was him beginning to think about this giant and his God. And he started to think about that. And then he started to talk about it back and forth with these guys. Your miracles depend on you thinking about it. Your miracles depend on you talking about it. Not about what's wrong. Amen. 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 We got too many of that. Amen. You know what fear does? I'm going to tell you this. Four things fear does. Can we agree that those Israelites were fearful? Can we agree that not one of them wanted to take up a sword and go across, the, across this, this um, ground to go fight this guy in the plane? Nobody wanted to. You know what? That's what fear does. It shuts you down. Fear will always, always convince people that it's not possible. And fear 
sadly enough, I wish faith was this way, but fear is unique in a way that it gathers everybody around to say, no, it's not possible. We see it in the word of God. When Joshua said, we can meet them. Yeah, it's a lot of land with some big fruits. We can get this land. And everybody, no, everybody gathered together. No, we can't. David was looking at all these men, but fear caused them to convince themselves that it wasn't possible. The other thing fear does, fears will take your memories of your past victories. There's so many victories that God has given you already. From when you were saved, even when you weren't saved, you knew God was taking care of you. You can look back and say, oh, come on. When you wanted to marry the one person and God gave you something else, come on. You say, thank you, God. Amen. 20 years later, praise God. I'm glad you took care of me. But God wants you to remember your victories. But fear takes it away immediately. Another thing fear does, it keeps you from accessing the full benefits of the gospel. It'll, it'll make you not only forget your victories, but would forget what's available to you. You forget what God can do for you. What does the word of God say? Forget not all thy benefits. What is the benefits that God says? To heal your body. That's one of the benefits. That is what fear does. So you're looking at all these men of, men of, men of God. They're men of God. All these soldiers were God's men. They forgot who sent them. God is with them in every one of their battles. Saul even forgot that who ordained him? The first king of Israel. Who ordained him? But God. God put him in office, and at the beginning, there was nothing that Saul couldn't do. The reason God picked him, he could get the job done. But fear will rob you it will take away your benefits. It'll take away your reason that you were sent and who sent you. It'll take those things away. When you forget those things, you end up like these Israelites shaking in that tent. And you end up wondering, what is God going to do? But David, oh, King David, look, before he's King David, young little boy David just walked to that tent with the, where they invited him over. Because see, look with this. You start talking faith in the midst of fear, and God sits you with a king. You start talking miracles and healings in a place of sickness, and God will lift you up. God just wants someone to believe. He just wants someone to be excited about the word of God, excited that he can do what he says he can do. And what, what did David do? When David seen all that, David started thinking and discussing it. Then he started talking to the king about it. He, and the king's like, well, you can't do this. You're just a kid. You, you can't make this happen. Who's ever been told that? You're not going to make this happen. It's impossible. It's just one of you or it's just two of you. It takes a lot of more people to get this done in faith. No. David didn't take no for an answer, but he started giving him his resume. His resume said this. I fought a bear, took one of my sheep, I chased it down, and God spared me from the paws of the bear. I fought a lion, came over there, took one of my, my sheep, and I chased it down, I chased it down. He pursued early in his life that what was stolen from him. Come on. He pursued it and said, you will not take it. This is mine. This belongs to me. It's my responsibility to take care of this sheep. And he killed a lion and a bear. David, at an early age, knew what God could do for him. And he let the king know right away that I am not afraid of this guy. I will go take him. I will go take care of him in the name of the Lord. Because why? Because God is sending him to do this. And what did the king look at him and say, well, here's all the armor. Here's my sword. I pr you know, let's pray for you and send you out there. And what did David do? Probably looked like a little dwarf. And all this, Saul was a big guy. And the metal and, and, the, and the stuff that he had was very heavy. David put this down. And the beautiful thing I love what David said, and we can look at it right here. And when he said this, he said, I've got to find it. 
Okay, I can't find it. But anyway, he says this. He says, I have not proved myself with that. He put down his weapons, the king's. He put down the helmet and the breastplate and everything. He said, I have not proven myself with this. Let me go and prove myself. What does that mean? That means that may be what you need for a victory. That may be what you need, and you've had plenty of battles with that armor, Mr. King. He goes, but the only thing I know how to do is fight is with a sling and some rocks. He goes, let me go with what I know. Let me go with what I, I know that I can win with this. I haven't proven myself with that. I don't deserve that. It's not mine. What that means to us, use what God has given you over the years in faith. There's no new movement. There's no new glory. God's been the same today, yesterday, and forever. The faith that you have, the faith that got the prayers answered when you need them, that's the faith you need to go to. You don't got to chase anyone or anything. You chase God. And what did he do? He picked up the rocks. He went across. And he killed that giant with a stone, knocked him down, took his head off. Why? Because he knew how to think big. He knew how to talk big. And then when he's walking, he knew how to walk big. And he's over there praying. And as he's walking, scripture show it, praying to God that I know that you've delivered this man into my hand. And why did he do that? If you look at the scriptures, because the guy defied the name of God. He cursed the name of God, and that made David mad. He goes, who is this that defies my God? Who is this that curses my God? He said, if he wants to fight, then I'll go over there and fight. David didn't think of size. David didn't think of anything else, but because he didn't have to. He already knew he had the victory. All he had to do was go. Amen. When I go through the places that we go to and we pray for the people we pray for, I see people come in that look so desperate. And I'm not saying anything wrong about that. I'm just saying it's been a hard life for them. They're trying to get their miracle. And I'm saying, thank God they came in, Lord, because I'm going to put their eyes on you. Amen. I'm going to let them know that this is a God that does all the miracles. Amen. That I just think big. I believe God can heal everyone. I believe God can touch anyone, and I believe God can do anything for anyone as long as we pray and we agree. And those watching online, I hope that your heart is getting something. And the Bible says this, the same gospel was preached unto me as unto them, but it wasn't mixed with faith. Mix it with faith. Let God take it the rest of the way. Believe God will change your life and give you the miracles that you need. You know, I was looking through some of the testimonies and testimonies and testimonies that we've had. Uh, I went all the way back to 2015. I was like, thank you, God. I'm remembering my victories, amen? But I'm remembering what God's doing for people. The other day I was asked, how many people you think you prayed for that got healed? I go, well, I never count who got healed. I only remember the ones that don't. Those are the ones that stay with me, and I go and intercede, and I go and pray. It's no, it's, there's no glory in it. It's God's. That's God's glory. I can't say I healed anyone. I can just say, thank God that God healed you and touched you. We're just at the, the Indian reservation. And remember, um, was it Crystal? Or who's the one that got us in? The, the, Crystal, right? Crystal, it was amazing. She came up there and she said, I need you to pray for my knees. I've hurt them. She's tall, tall for an Indian, very tall lady for an Indian. And uh, she, she said, I need you to pray for my knees because they, I play basketball and they've been hurting ever since. And then I had an accident and something's wrong with my neck right here. It's sticking out or something's hurting in there. And I'm like, well, that's, that's awesome. Okay, we'll pray. The minute I touched her knees, faith has a sound. Amen. Do you not know that? The Bible says, Elijah said, and I heard the abundance of rain. Did not see the abundance of rain. He heard. Faith has a sound. I believe when God sends it from heaven, it breaks supernatural barriers to get to you. Just like the sonic boom that hits when the jets go by. Something happens in the atmosphere when faith is released. And for some reason, we've been blessed that we can hear knees popping. And I hear knees popping when I was praying for her. And I touched her neck, and she just fell down. And we had guys, we had plenty of guys. Tom helped. Thank you so much.
He had so many people here helping, and, and Jose was helping, and, and I was helping. We were catching people, and she got up, and she, the biggest eyes, I'm healed. She just looked at us, right, Jose? She looked at us, and she goes, I'm healed, and she touches her knees. I'm healed. Isn't it wonderful? I'm, we're going in there. We're just evangelizing, and God touches him. God ministers to him. God does something that they did not even expect to happen. Why? Because we just come in and we love them. Now, I had to preach a bit. Sorry, Tom, to keep you there for an hour and a half. But I did have to preach. I had to preach. Because you know what? I have to preach so I get the faith to where it's at. These are people that may have not known what God could do with miracles. And I had to let them know. Plus, you had to introduce yourself. And it's a whole different thing. So my guys told me, you're an hour and a half. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I just got to preach when God tells me to preach. But I tell you, you never know what happens. Irene, can you give me a water real quick? From the, and, uh, and I tell you what, when you believe God can do anything. In 2015, I went to a small little place in Milano, Texas. You know where Milano, Texas is? Just past Bryan, a um, small little place out that way. They didn't know anyone in the church but my friends that invited me to preach. And, and the pastor agreed to have me there. And Daryl McManus and Cindy McManus and um, went there and, and, and preached. I tell you what, I preached my heart out. You can hear crickets. I mean, I'm giving good stories. I'm making people, some people laugh, but nobody was really, they were like, who, you know, who's this boy, <laughs> basically. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, so, so I went up there to start praying for people. All right, thanks, man. And, and when I went up there to start praying for them, that's when it hit the floor. Everybody started getting healed. Everybody started falling down. I mean, you ain't got to talk to anyone about who you are. You ain't got to say, I did this, and I did this, and I'm well qualified. You let God do the talking. When God speaks for you, oh, it's a different sound. It, it's, it's instant proof. I've been in many churches where when I walk in and I've gone to some places where you know, not many of them seem Hispanics. They didn't know what it was, Indian, Hispanic, Hawaiian, or Native American. I don't know. They just kind of open the door and say, are you David? <laughs> the pastor saying, are you David? I'm like, yeah, I'm David. And I preach. But after I preach, oh, there's such a war. Because we're the kindred of spirits. We, lo we love God the same way. And it breaks down any kind of racial barrier or any hostility or any uncomfortableness. It breaks it all down. And when I went there, I was like, people were getting healed. I knew they were. But we, we had a, was a man that was suffering from back injuries. Well, when I got back home, I found out that his back was completely healed. Amen? That, that was one of the first times that I heard about backs being healed in our ministry. I mean, we've been doing this well on beyond that. Sorry, let me put this over here. But, um, but you never know. You never know where you go and what God does. I was at the NRB convention, uh, the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. I'm over there. I'm over there promoting my book. Sorry, I did a little promo there. Promoting my book. And I'm, I'm sitting there. Well, not many people came up to get it. I'm at the NRB, which is predominantly non-believing faith type of miracles and healings. <laughs> it was, it's, I'm, I'm being honest. I was at a Baptist convention. <laughs> Sorry, Baptist. <laughs> and uh, we're losing viewers right now. I know we are. <laughs> it came out. It just did. And I'm over there. I'm talking a book of faith and miracles. Everybody's like, mm, what you got? Mm, keep walking by me. <laughs> it just wasn't working. And I'm over there. Just take it, please. Just take it. <laughs> And, uh, and, and the thing is that it's a book buyer's convention as well. And, and uh, some, some, some book buyers are there, but mainly it's all about broadcasting. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, I'm bored. And I, when I get bored, I start thinking what God wants me to do. That's a good thing. <laughs> Praise God. When you get bored, you think what God wants you to do because we get ourselves in a mess. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I start seeing this lady limping like this. And I go, hey, I know what to help you. What's that? This book. <laughs> She goes, Igniter of faith, release your miracle. And she's like, well, I go, do you believe God can heal you? I just do my sales pitch to her real quick. Do you believe God can heal you? Uh, I believe he can heal. I go, darling, it's for God to heal you. You got to believe he can do it for you. You can't just say, oh, I think he can heal. Oh, maybe it's his will or maybe it'll get done. I'm a Texas boy, darlings. <laughs> so I tell her, you know what? I'm going to pray for you. What? I'm going to pray for you. And when I pray for you, you will get healed. I wouldn't say she was possibly going to get healed. I wouldn't say, well, we'll believe God for your healing. I said, you're going to get healed. I just staked the, I staked the claim and said, you will be healed. And then she went over there and she's like, okay. 
and I, and I pray for her, pray for her knee. And she said she'd been suffering this for like maybe three or four years. And then she just went on. Well, the next day came by. And when the next day came by, I was over there sitting in the same booth, still trying to get rid of my books. Nobody, no takers, no takers at all. And then I'm sitting there and, and she's walking around, speed walking. And she passed me up and then she stopped, comes back. Hey, David. I go, hey. She goes, I love your book. I go, by the way. She goes, I am healed. And she walked off. Come on. We have to believe it's for us. It sounds wonderful when you see someone get healed. But God says in his word, he is not a respecter of persons. In other words, if he did it for me and he's healed me many times, he'll do it for you many times. There's no limit to his grace. There's no limit to his mercy. There's no limit to what Jesus does for us. Amen. If you would turn your Bibles real quick to, to John, the very first chapter of John. I was reading this today, and it just, it just stuck with me so much. I have to read it to you. We're just going to read the, um, the four verses here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Of course, we know that's Jesus. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. And I love this part. This really stuck out to me. Verse number three. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comp comprehendeth it not. Now, I'm going to tell you about verse 5 before I go to verse 3. Verse 5, I didn't ever, I mean, how, do we ever really understand that scripture? The, you know, he's a, we'll read it, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. I did not understand that 100% until I started preaching. And people would call me, email me, Facebook and Twitter, and scream, liar, God don't do that. Liar, you're a crook. Nobody heals. God don't heal anymore. Darkness will never understand the light except by divine revelation and the Holy Ghost. Darkness is all around us if you look at the news. Darkness is around us and is always pursuing us to bring us down. And I got to tell you the truth. Sometimes I read those comments and I'm like, oh, man, it makes me feel a little bad. Who's no, who won't be fat, bad? But I'm thinking, this guy don't even know me. He just seen a picture. And it's mainly about my healing services in Los Angeles. Do you know when we went to L.A., it was the most difficult time for us spiritually. We we're being attacked everywhere we'd go. Something would come up. Do you know that is the most hate mail that I got from LA? But do you know that's the place that instantly when I put it up, people start signing up like y'all signed up to come. You don't have to, but it gives us a good head count. So we know how much food to prepare. So it's, so I tell you what, God calls us to go places and your feelings aren't always going to be up here, but you persevere. You push through with that coworker yes. that's giving you a hard time. You push through with it. You persevere. Why? Because you are the light and you shine and darkness comprehendeth it not. Darkness don't understand why you have so much love in you. Darkness never will understand, never comprehend why you believe God could do what he can. I'm telling you, I've worked in the workforce for a long time. I know there's a lot of people, a lot of people there that you just, well, we'll just leave it like that. <laughs> it's just crazy. But when you read that scripture, it's amazing that, that when you look at the way that the world is reacting, we got to understand. They're in darkness. They don't understand. But that means that Jesus says in the word of God right here that his light shines in us. Amen. The Bible says also, in the Gospels, let your, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Come on. God knew you were going to have trouble in the workplace. He knew. You had to see your good works that they may glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Amen. It's just scriptures. I just put them together for you, for you to see it in a different way. Now, verse 3, all things are made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, I'm going to give you something very simple, and then we're going to go. We're going to talk a little bit more about some testimonies, and we're going to go to prayer. And that is this. If God made you, don't you think he knows how to fix you? 
Is that simple enough? He made every one of us. He made every one of us. And he knows if you need a new back, a new lung, a new heart, new eyes. He, he knows what you need. He knows how to fix you. We just got to reach out, believe. I make it sound real simple, but it is. It's nothing difficult in believing. Was it difficult when you came to Jesus and you believed? Did you just come up and say, oh, Lord, I receive you as my Lord and Savior? You gave your heart to God. Was that difficult? Did you believe it? You believed it, right? The same belief is the same way when we pray for our healing. You just believe it. Now it takes time at some times for God to manifest it. It takes time sometimes for God to do something. There was this, this lady that worked in the chase that used to be open here off by the Dibbert Mall. Um, I went in to go see my friend Paul. He's a business banker and I was to go talk about my accounts. And even though there's, there's not hundreds of money in there, they still treat me really nice. <laughs> and he sat down with Paul and talked. Was, he was off that day. And then she was there. And her name's Sherry. And she, and she said, it's fine for me to share her testimony. She was sitting there and she just looked so down. She helped me and my son because we had to get an open account for him. And she was, she was very um, troubled. And she kept apologizing to my son that she had to share with her her problems. You know, her husband died. And her husband died. And when her husband died, she was left alone. And they never had a great relationship towards the end. And she was just so distraught about that that physically her body was falling apart on her. Well, the doctors gave her medicine that made her nauseated and throw up. And she caught an, an infection through some shampoo that she got that was biodegradable. And, and they it, it messed with her immune system. She, couldn't, she worked at a bank. And she couldn't stare at the monitor for more than 20 minutes without getting nauseated. And the nauseating medicine made her throw up. So she was going through all this, plus the trauma of losing her, her husband. And she's just right there talking and crying and talking. And, and, and you know, we, I gave her my book. And, and, and I, that was one of the reasons I did go in there as well. I, I promised her a book the last time I was in there, and I brought it to her. And, and, and um, well, I prayed for her and stuff. I seen her a few, maybe a couple of months later. Well, after a couple of months, she told me how she was doing, and I was checking up on her, making sure she was okay. I, have to, I like to do that. I like to make sure that, you know, it's so great for me to pray for you, but how's things been? You know, do you need any help? Do you need, we got a great prayer team here, great women of God, great men of God that know how to pray, know how to reach out and touch, and to, to like a commercial, reach out and touch someone. Anyway, so I'm sitting down, I won't sit down with her the next time that I go in there, and she tells she was completely different. She was completely lifted. She was completely excited about God. How many of you know we got to be excited about God? we got to be excited that he's going to do something, amen? But excited about getting up in the morning. Oh, I know it's hard sometimes. But it's excited about going and being a light. Excited about wherever you're at, God's using you. Now, she told me, i got to tell you my story. I'm like, well, go ahead, tell me. i got time. So I sat down with her, and she said that after I prayed for her, she went home. She read my book. She finished reading the book like one day. Well, she went to church like the next day, and she said, God, I know you can touch me. I know you can heal me. Even in this church, they don't call up people to get prayed for, but they open the altars. They don't lay hands on you, but they let you come up and pray. I don't know what kind of church she went to. I like trying to think of it. I'm naming out different denominations. <laughs> it's like, she goes, no, not that, not that. But anyway, she came up to the front. She said that when she got up to the front to get prayed, to go and pray to the Lord, she was going up there, and as she got up to the front to kneel down, she seen a revelation Jesus opened up, kind of just walked right out in front of her, took her stomach and put it inside behind him, wherever he came out of, put something else in her and just touched her on her cheeks like that and stepped back into her and was gone. She's gone. She hadn't suffered any sickness since. Come on. Prayers move, but faith moves prayers. We got to believe that faith to move prayers. We pray for her. She went and got the word of God in her because it's all scripture filled. More like that. It's all scripture filled. And, and she got out and she said she was able on her own to say, God, come and touch me. Went to a place where she knew God's presence was and God touched her. So I'm telling you this, my friends. We got to believe that God can move in mighty ways for us. Amen. That God can do these things. You know, when I was on, I, I was going 
promoting um, different things of our ministry. God really opened doors. I was all over Atlanta, um, Greenville, South Carolina, Augusta, um, Georgia, and uh, uh, just all different places. And going on television and being interviewed and stuff, you never know if any of that really does anything. I mean, I wasn't getting any phone calls or any mail or anyone ordering any books, but I kept going on my own dime. I'm on my own finances buying, getting, I, I was in the Delta club at that time. I had free tickets, so it didn't matter. I was just had to pay for my hotel and the rent a car. And <laughs> I was out there. I was trying, I was, I would go on a mission trip, get a lot of miles when it used to give you miles and, and then, uh, and then go take these domestic flights and stuff and try and evangelize. You just do it whatever way you know how to do it. Amen. And do you know that, that an 82 year old woman called in to receive Jesus for the first time? One of the times that I was on the air. She just called in and said, I want what that young guy got. And then another, another old, old lady, I have to be careful saying old lady, older lady. <laughs> I was at the Women's of Glow and they were like, we're old, David, it's okay. <laughs> and and uh, the one in Conroe, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I just, I just be, try to be respectful. But uh, do you know that, that when, when she, she called in and she was like, I love this young guy. I want to see him on my TV more. Every time he speaks, I'm laughing. He goes, it's good that he just brings out the true personality of what Christ would be. He's not very formal, just loving God. And that's good when someone else says that. Amen. And, and so people were getting touched to that. People were getting touched in different ways. And even the, the last time I was there, the cameraman was deaf in his ear. And they asked me to pray. I know I shared this before, but some of you may not have heard this. I went over there to go um, eat lunch. We just finished the show, two-hour show. They're going to take me to lunch, which was cool. Get in my bag. Nobody's inside the camera room, the studio part like this. No one's there but the cameraman. And they both, one's deaf in his left ear, and the other one was deaf in his right ear, and I just thought that was hilarious. I'm serious. Those are, it's like, and they're, they're father and son. So I was even funnier. And I'm like, my goodness. I, yeah, I'll pray for you. I thought that was cool. So I was like, let's pray. So I went over there to go pray for him. And, but when I started to pray, I'm like, oh, man, these guys are going to fall down. There's no one to catch them. And they're going to think I knocked them out or something. <laughs> and I'm like looking behind me. I'm thinking, well, I feel God to pray for them now. So let me pray. So I went ahead and I told them I'm going to have a patented move in India that I developed to pray and catch at the same time. Because <laughs> I, won't, I won't demonstrate it here because we're on the camera. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway, I prayed and I caught them like I would catch them in India. And the uh, only thing is, Indians are a lot smaller, so it's easier. <laughs> it's like you don't lose your back, and these guys are kind of big. So I still did that, and they both hit the ground. Well, the dad got healed instantly. Amen. But the son, he said, I felt something. I go, that's good, because that means God deposited something in your faith. You know God deposits stuff in our faith? He'll put that miracle right there, ready to hatch, ready to break open, ready just to get the right water, the right sunlight, the right faith. To make it activate in your life. Amen? Amen. So when he went over there, I went home two weeks later, or three weeks later, I get a message on our messenger. And if those that are always trying to get prayer requests, the best way is a messenger is on Facebook. I always pray for those as they come in. Um, and when he, he testified this, he said, the day you prayed for me, I felt something. That Sunday, I went to church. Well, I said, that's good. You should go to church. <laughs> that's, that's a good place to go, to go to church, be in front of God, praise the Lord. That's good stuff to do. He goes, but when I got in the parking lot, I turned off my car. I reached for my Bible and I heard a pop. I was healed before I walked through those doors. Come on. That's what God does. That's what God does. And we're going to right now, we're going to pray. And I'm going to have you all join me praying. For those that are watching online right now and those that are watching on Roku and everywhere else this goes, we're going to believe God for your miracles. You might say, well, how can you believe God for me to heal me even now? Well, Paul, the original TV evangelist, took aprons, ripped them in pieces, and sent them all over the place and took the same anointing that he had in his service to the places that the, all over the villages. And guess what happened? The Bible says his people were healed and demons left. Amen. So we're believing right now as you're watching online and everybody just pray for everybody praying. We're going to get you all believing for right now. This is what we do here. We all pray when we're praying for people. Father, we believe that those that are watching on this network and on Facebook Live and YouTube and all the places, that they are healed. 
that backs are healed in Jesus' name, that eyes are healed and focused again. Father, we pray for vertebrae. Father, we pray for necks, Father, and we speak against cancer, and we command it to go in Jesus' name. We believe that everyone healing, everyone hearing this is healed, delivered, and better than they were five minutes ago. We believe pain is gone. And we believe that there's no more headaches in Jesus' name. There's no more headaches in Jesus' name. Migraines are gone in Jesus' name. And we speak against the spirit of infirmity right now. We speak against that spirit. We command you to go in Jesus' name. And we command right now all those that are suffering from autism to be healed. And we command that spirit to be gone right now that is buying this child, buying this children, buying these young, beautiful people. And Father, we command it to go right now in Jesus' name. We believe it. And we receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I just want to tell all of y'all on, online that we love you and we'd love to see you in our studio. Please check David Deanna's ministries for future, future events. God bless you. Okay, you can cut.